And I suppose, what is the point of, of a museum if it's not going to be a place for discussion, debate, and learning? That is your point of view. That is my point of view. But it's mm. not shared by a number of my colleagues, mm. which I find completely bizarre. I mean, you were essentially providing the value of the universe, of, sorry, rather the museum to the population. Funny, isn't that mm. what I'm being paid for? Mm. What am I being paid for as a director? To deliver value. <laughs> so then let me ask this. One day, there's going to come a day when you're no longer the director. Yes, and I know already when that is. I'm not going to ask, <laughs> but I, I hope your tenure is long and uh, happy. But uh, how do you prepare the chair for when you leave? So how, how, do, you, how do you position... So, one of, so, there are lots of myths and misconceptions about leadership in this world. How many people do you think a person who wants to be a leader has to lead? It depends on what you mean by the question. So One. Uh, okay. If you want to exercise leadership, you have to lead yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be... You have to know yourself and you have to be in control of yourself. Okay? And what is the only job leaders have to do? Create other leaders. So this is why you've pushed off in the direction of education as opposed to... Because you were a successful researcher uh, looking into the sex life of ferns. And so at some point you decided to make the jump from individual research... I suppose, see, in my conception, with my research, I, I can have impact in my particular small area. I imagine, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I imagine the viewpoint that you may have taken is that by educating a large percentage of the population or, or acting in the role that you're currently in, your impact is in some sense magnified. Is, is that the with me With me, it was the other way around. So... Um, I not just joined the Natural History Society Bielefeld at the age of 12 or 14. I also became, um, I, I come from a sort of political family. Um, um, my father was active in the unions. My grandfather and his father were very active um, in, in, in the Social Democrats. Um, a strong Protestant upbringing um, of your daily work is your daily worship. Um, and I was always politically interested, as long as I would say I can think. Um, and so um, originally, actually, because then when I came out of the army, I, um, I became quite active and involved through the Natural History Society in, in political machinations in in Bielefeld, not, not aligned to any political party, just sort of trying to give um, science-based advice um, on city developments and um, nature policies and so on and so forth. And um, so when I started studying, I actually wanted to study law um, rather than biology. Um, and I did both. And um, when I got the opportunity to, um, to go to Cambridge, um, to do genetics, um, I wanted to do that because I knew that the two areas where science, where biology and law overlapped and which were really important issues, political as well as socially, were environmental issues and um, genetics because sort of DNA technologies came along and one could already see that it was leading eventually, as it does now, to personalized medicine, all this type of stuff. And when I went to Cambridge, um, I, um, I went there um, telling them um, I, I want to be an active person, um, not necessarily in biology, but in, in the politics of science. Um, and that was one of the reasons why they were very keen to have me. And then um, when I got the um, uh, scholarship to do my PhD at Cambridge at the Natural History Museum in London, um, 
my supervisors knew that I actually had a political agenda, um, but they said, look, in order for you to get agency, um, first of all, you need to have a substantial body of um, scientific excellence and evidence um, behind you, because whatever you want to do, that is what nobody will ever be able to take away from you. Um, so, in a way, um, I was educated um, and I also um, made steps myself um, to do the job I do now. I have been trained to do this job mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to do this job. I mean, whether it's in Berlin, London or God knows where, it's a completely different issue. Um, but I've done all the stuff, including management school and all this type of stuff, um, coaching, um, done lots of mistakes, um, got my bloody nose, um, dusted myself off um, and um, did it better next time. So, no, this is deliberate. This is not an accident. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so the science bit was actually um, the necessary bit to do the stuff that I do now. And of course, the other thing uh, is um, honing the skills of storytelling, because that's how humans communicate and and work with each other. And if you have these marvelous objects with these marvelous stories, um, what more do you need? So my cardboard box is basically my box of goodies and treasures and um, endless stories. <laughs>